Sand trickles through an hourglass to measure the passing of time. But to most of us, it isn't a few grains of sand or the hands of a clock or a shadow on a sundial that gives time a meaning. We judge it instead by an event in our lives, by an incident, by a twist of circumstances that far more surely than any mechanical device marks the boundary between what was and what's going to be. That event might be a serious one, or maybe it's colored with laughter, or perhaps it's a haunting combination of both. But take my word for it, you'll recognize it when it happens. A few minutes, a handful of chuckles, a couple of tears, and somehow your life isn't quite the same afterwards as it was before. I don't know why we put up with it. Well, what are, we, what are we putting up with? Don't you never listen to what I say. I was referring to women. Oh, women. Well, what about them? Oh, not women so much as our wives. Our wives. Another drink, Charlie. What women today are doing to our kids is a real caution. They're alienating them from their fathers. That's a fact. They're, they're what? Alienating them. I read it somewhere, and it's true. The women spend all day with the kids, poisoning them against us. The women tell the kids we spend all our time in bars. Can you imagine that? No respect. It's the trouble with the younger generation. No respect. No love for the old man. No respect, huh? Well, maybe you got something, Charlie. Maybe you got something there. Listen, if we were to die tomorrow, our kids wouldn't even notice it. Now, wait a minute. Aren't you putting that a little strong, Fred? That's the truth. They wouldn't notice it because they don't care. All they want is to watch some two-headed bum from Mars or some bow-legged cowboy gallop across a ten-inch screen. Uh, what I'd like to do to let hop along Cassidy. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's uh, hoppy this and hoppy that. My kid likes TV, yeah, but... Uh, I still think he prefers his old man. Oh, you want to bet? What do you mean, bet? Listen, I've heard your Billy and my little Joe talk, and you couldn't play in the same league with that Cassidy. Look, my Billy likes me better than any cowboy, I'll guarantee you that. Your Billy wouldn't give two hoots if you fell over cold in the living room, as long as you didn't fall on a television set and louse up the reception. You want to bet? Bet. Five will get you 20 if your kid bats an eye when I tell him you've been in an accident. Well, how are we, uh, how are we gonna, uh, how are we gonna swing this? Well, is Mary home? No, no, this is her day at the beauty parlor. You know, she gets all the things for the curls and all that. It's an all day production with her. And there's no problem. Well, just the same, I better call home to check just to make sure. We'll see about this. Is that you, Billy? This is Poppy. He always calls me Poppy. Kind of cute, isn't it? Hey, Billy, your mother isn't home today, is she? That's what I thought. Never mind where Poppy is. What are you doing? Oh, yeah? Well, how did I know I was interrupting Space Brigade? Go on back to Mars, see if I care. How do you like that? Now, what'd I tell you, huh? Now, look. Here's what we'll do. We'll sneak around to your place, and we'll go in the back way. And then you wait in the kitchen. I'll go in the front room, and I'll tell your Billy that his beloved Poppy has just broke a leg. And we'll see what happens. All right. My kid may like TV and all that stuff. But when the chips are down, he'll still stick by his old Poppy. Hello, Billy lad. Billy? Billy, my boy. I don't know how to break the news to you. I'm afraid it's gonna hurt. Billy, your poppy's been injured. He's got a broken leg. In fact, Billy, poppy broke two legs. That's right, two legs and a collarbone. Two legs that are... No, I don't believe it. It's the truth, son. He's in the hospital now, and the pain is pretty bad. He wants to see. The pain? He wants to see me? Calling. 
What will he do? Where will he go? I want to see him. I want to see him. Take me to him. Let me see him. That's I want to see him. Take me to him. It's all right, Billy. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, my boy. Let me see him. Take it easy, he, Billy. He might be dying. Billy, He's wait a minute. Billy, wait a minute. You're... I'm all right. Look, it's your dad. Look, I, I, I'm... my legs are all right. I'm not he, in the hospital. He the same. Be right... What? You mean it was you he was talking about? Sure, didn't you hear Fred say that Poppy broke two legs? Yeah, I heard him. Well, look, here I am. Well, I thought he said Hoppy broke two legs. Gone, honey? They sure are, Chris. Come on in. Hey, how much tonight? About 3,000. No kidding, that's terrific. What's the total now? About 15,000. Oh. Which means, honey, that we're gonna knock off for a while. Where would you like to go? Miami, Palm Springs? Oh, darling, let's go to Las Vegas. They say it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Good enough. Start packing. <laughs> Oh, uh, you better make it snappy, honey. I'd kind of like to be gone when the boys catch on. <laughs> <gasps> okay, Richie. But you promised me. No cards, you said. We're on vacation, remember? I know, Chris. But this sap's just aching for it. I can spot him a mile away. A retired businessman, some chain store outfit in St. Paul. How do you know? He might be a phony. Not a chance. I had him checked by an agency yesterday, long distance. What'd they say? Hmm, plenty. The guy's loaded to the tune of four million bucks. Oh. Wow. Well, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right, Chris. And if I work him right, the other guy's good for eight, ten thousand. What's his game? Jen. You want me to uh, fix up the room? No. He's a funny duck. Says he loves sunshine. Insists that we play at the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Just be sure you come back with something besides a sunburn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you let him win for three days. When are you going to take him? Today. I'll recoup today. If you don't mind telling me just how much recouping do you have to do? 8,500. Richie. Oh, don't worry, baby. I'll get it all back with interest. How bad now? About ten and a half. But I'll get it all back. But then. nothing. I think you better quit. Oh, I can't quit now, Chris. Well, have you... Have you tried everything? Everything. He's either the luckiest gin player or he's the best. Well, you, you better go out there today and do something or we'll be hitchhiking back to New York. I give you my word, baby. It's today or never. That's the whole story, sir. He checked out about two hours ago, but he only got as far as the airport. Thanks. You're welcome, sir. Oh, baby, am I sick. I wish I'd never seen this place. You mean you had no idea he wasn't a big businessman? No. That agency must have been in on it. When I asked for him this morning, they told me he tried to leave town, but the police nabbed him at the airport. He was really Uncle Billy Randolph, the big con man. 
Well, it's too bad. But it's the breaks of the game. We'll get the dough back. No, it's not that, honey. I just can't figure out how he could do it. You know, con men aren't card mechanics, yet he beat me at my own racket. He couldn't have marked the cards. I used a new deck every game. I just can't figure it out. Maybe it's a son or something. Hey. Yeah. Maybe it is the sun. Huh? What do you mean? You got sunstroke or something? It was the sun, all right. He took you to the cleaners with that sunshine by the pool story. Will you stop talking crazy? What's with this sunshine business? What do you know? Well, it just shows you don't pay to fall for that health business. Sunshine. Nuts. Well, the hourglass didn't change much while that happened. But it was long enough for the pattern of a life or two to go winging off in a brand new direction. And that's the way we really measure time, not by the flow of a few grains of sand, but by the flow of happiness and sometimes the sadness that make up life's little theater. Um.